So this is Cyber Dragons. Now, Cyber Dragons recently got a couple of new cards to support it. One of them being Cyber Tactical Dragon, which is a pretty cool card. 3200 attack. You can shuffle two light attribute machine monsters from your graveyard into the deck. Destroy it to two face up monsters on your opponent's field whose total attack are less than or equal to this card. So a lot of the time, this is just going to be popping a boss monster, and then you just get to stick a 3200 guy, which is pretty good. That's, that's good enough on its own. On top of that, they also got Cyber Processor. Cyber Processor is a really, really cool card. If you have a face-up machine type monster in your field, you can summon this card from your hand face up to your field. Then you can send one other card from your field to the graveyard. This card's name becomes Cyber Dragon this turn. Then you can summon a Cyber Dragon from your graveyard face up. So ideally, you want to use Cyber Processor, get rid of another card, bring back your Cyber Dragon, Cyber Processor becomes Cyber Dragon. And if you have a fusion or a power bond, you can make either Cyber Twin Dragon or you can make the Cyber Rush Dragon. So generally, it's here just to facilitate getting the fusions off more often. And I think that is one of the major strengths of the deck now is that we have so many ways to access our powerful fusion monsters that we now don't necessarily need to be running as many big high level monsters. Now still having high level monsters is a good idea, but we could reuse something like a Dark Lurker rather than just clog up the slots. The other problem is Cyber Assault Dragon is a level 8, which is a bit of a pain in the ass because we really want to be using Ship of the Seven Treasures just because of how good it is. Unfortunately, it does not work with Cyber Assault Dragon. Well, not how we want it to at the very least. But again, Cyber Assault Dragon a lot of the time is going to be a one tree monster anyway, so maybe it's not the end of the world. The basic premise of this deck is always going to be the same thing, which is fusion summon as much as possible. If we can get into our Cyber Twin Dragon, it can attack twice. It's really, really good. It can threaten most boards, and it's just really, really powerful. Cyber End Dragon is a bit more rare to go into, but the piercing effect on this card can be really, really good. And a lot of the time, 4,000 can be too big for your point to deal with. The only problem with this card is it's very susceptible to something like Magic Cylinder, so you have to really play around that. The Cyber Rush Dragon is also surprisingly good. This card we can use to basically draw a card. So if, our, if we manage to completely empty our hand and we use Cyber Rush Dragon's effect, we can draw five, discard four of them, either just keep one card in hand, which we could then you know set it or anything, or if it is a high level machine, we could cheat it out. So for example, we could get out a Steel Mech Lord Mirror Innovator, which can be a really, really good play. So all of the Cyber Fusions do have their place in this deck and making them has never been easier and it might even get easier in the future. So Cyber Assault Dragon's effect does come up because obviously monsters that are 2400 or more attack that are level 8 or lower, it's not all boss monsters but it's quite a few of them. So being able to get rid of them can be really really good as well as putting a Cyber Dragon at the top of the deck can be useful. Now ideally we just kind of want Cyber Dragon in our graveyard because then we can keep using it with things like Cyber Processor and things like Cyber Entry but being on top of the deck is also fine. Mirror Innovator doesn't really need an introduction. This card is completely bonkers. We can use it to gain piercing. We can use it to gain a shit ton of attack. Attack over something like a maximum if we need to. And we can use it to shuffle cards back into our deck so that we can reuse them. So just really, really fantastic card. It's going to be the core of any machine deck pretty much ever. Dark Lurker, again, is just a fantastic card. Pop back row, burn your opponent. A lot of the time, if you're worried your opponent's got Magic Cylinder or if they're just on low life points, you can reuse Dark Lurker a couple of times during the same turn, burn them for multiple thousands in one go and try and either end the game or get rid of their troublesome back row. Just really fantastic card. And we can put it back in our hand and discard it with Ship of the Seven Treasures to get some extra value there. Three Cyber Dragons, again, just fantastic. The three Cyber Processes we've already talked about, again, really important combo tool. Mirage Dragon. Now, Mirage Dragon, again, is very important in this deck. You could also use something like Jinzo, but Jinzo is another tribute monster. If you've got too many tribute monsters in your deck, maybe that can clash. In this deck, we're obviously not running that many, so you probably could sort this out for Jinzo. But Mirage Dragon is also fine. We can use it as tribute fodder if we need to, and also it turns off combat traps. Specifically, Magic Cylinder is the big one, but also this will stop things like Dark Revelation. It will start things like Mirror Force. Just turning off those traps is just really, really important. Cyber Griffin. This card, more often than not, is now used to cycle, just discard draw a card. The trap protection does come up, obviously, but more often than not, people are playing the Magic Cylinder now over the Mirror Force, which means Cyber Griffin's trap destruction prevention is not as useful. But if you're playing against something like Spellcasters, it can be really good against Dark Revelation. Proto Cyber Dragon, again, really important card. A lot of the time it will be Tribute Fodder, but it's also a Cyber Dragon when it's on the field, and we can summon it off of Cyber Entry, which is just really, really good. Cyber Kotal, this card again, really, really powerful now because we can use it to summon out Cyber Processor or Cyber Dragon. It's doubled the number of targets we have for this card, which makes it really, really good. A lot of the time you still will whiff with this card, but it's now a lot more likely to go off. And if it does go off, it can be really, really good because if we can summon out like a Processor, we can use Processor's effect to get rid of Kotal, bring back Cyber Dragon. Bam, we've got two Cyber Dragons on board. Really, really strong. 
Next up, Amazing Dealer. Doesn't need any introduction. Fantastic card. Um, obviously, if we don't see this early, it's not going to be doing as much. Uh, or we'd have to work overtime to shuffle all our cards back into our deck with Mirror Innovator. But Amazing Dealer can be what you need to throw the right cards into the graveyard, like the Cyber Dragons, and to draw into the correct cards that you need to perform the Fusion Summon, like Fusion, like Power Bond, like Cyber Processor. And then Galactica Jamais Vu, again, reusing spell cards is the name of the game right now. Being able to put cards like Fusion, like Power Bond, like Cyber Entry back into the deck, reuse them and draw additional cards is really, really important. The plus one off of the drawing a lot of the time is really, really impactful. And being able to recycle spells is so important at the moment that this card almost feels like an auto include in most decks. Iron Onslaught. This deck is not playing Sea Dragon Knight, and that is because we have the Iron Onslaughts here already so iron onslaught is a card we can reuse by using something like galactica jamais vu but on top of that we can just use it to pop back row along with our lurker to try and get rid of opponents like magic cylinders or like we're saying dark revelation or mirror force just get rid of those problematic cards and this deck feels like you really need to because again this deck wants to just summon out big monsters blast your opponent and try and otk them and the best way to do that is if your opponent hasn't got pesky back row getting in the way the Ship of the Seven Treasures, again, fantastic card. You can discard anything, but if we discard one of our sevens, we get an extra draw, which is really, really good. Just consistency is key, so that's what we're always going to be looking for. Three copies of Fusion. So, so this is the card. If we if we see too many of it early, this can really, really stop our plays. And that does happen sometimes, but it's kind of the nature of the beast when you're playing a Fusion deck. Obviously, it would be better if we had something like an Overload Fusion to fuse from the Graveyard, but Cyber Dragons don't have that. We have to use regular Fusion, so you just got to play with the hand you dealt. Cyber Entry, uh, again, really good card. Uh, I've seen a lot of people cutting this card, but I think as a one-off, it's still pretty cool. So as long as we've got three or more light attribute machine nuts in the grave, we can make a Cyber Dragon or Proto-Cyber Dragon, which is good. And then it prevents you from attacking with non-light machines, which is fine. The only thing that really stops is Mirage Dragon, because we're not going to be attacking with Dark Lurker. But Mirage Dragon doesn't necessarily need to attack, it just needs to be on the field. So just trying to make the fusions more consistent is always what we're trying to do in this deck. Power Bond again, we have had so many games where we just win because we drop Power Bond. Power Bond, you can just slap it down, gain a crap ton of attack, and just blast someone out of the game. That's basically what Cyber Dragons do. Cyber Dragon is kind of just an OTK deck. That's what it's always been in the TCG. Even as it's evolved throughout the ages, it's kind of always just still been that. And Power Bond is very kind of the antithesis of this, where you want to use it to just use into, I mean, sometimes an 8,000 piercer will be all you need to win the game, but more often than not, it will be Cyber Twin Dragon getting up to 5,600 and attacking twice over like two 2,000 attack monsters, bam, bam, slap them for just a crap ton of damage. The Battle Demotion is the best machine generic trap. This card is a little bit wonky. I do find that this card is useful a lot of the time, but this card is useless against Sea Serpent Maximum. It is not as useful against a lot of decks that want to kind of pop your back row. Um, obviously, we can only use the battle phase, which means it gets turned off by things like Mirage Dragon and Pitch Black War Wolf. But this card is still useful a lot of the time because we can change any monster to defense mode. So any big fusion monsters higher than level 8, we can just change into defense, which can be really, really important. The so Nobody Scat Thief, this card has become pretty much an MVP I feel at this point it's it's such a strong card it can stop you from losing the game depending again what you're against and it can also sort out your hand you can get rid of the bricks in your hand you can again just get rid of the top x cards of your deck so like the draw three don't like any of them get rid of all of them and then you just said okay I'm not drawing those three cards next turn it's just a really good card and then magic cylinder probably the best card in the format fantastic card right now Again, the, the name of the game is Make Giant Guy Slam Into Opponent. Magic Cylinder says, no, you don't get to do that. And there is so much trap destruction prevention, like Cyber Griffin going around, that it makes playing things like Mirror Force and Torrential Tribute feel a little bit worse. And Magic Cylinder can just play around all of them. So the side deck is basically just anti-meta, I guess. So Vanity's Fiend stops all of the best decks right now. The best decks being things like Wonder Fusion Turbo, being like uh, XQTs, being like Sea Serpent Maximum. All of these decks want to special summon. Even like Light Galaxy, Dark Galaxy, Cyber Dragons, they all want to be special summoning. So being able to turn that off, and again with the Barrier Statue as well, is really, really important. Because a lot of the time your opponent will have to summon out a weaker board just to contest your Vanity's Fiend or your Barrier Statue so that they can try and pop off the following turn. And then during that turn of downtime, you can then try and like capitalize on it or try and blow your opponent out of the game. Next up, we have our anti XQT cards. So we have the Mad Rare Aquila, which can pop level sixes, really, really good. And we have the Prison Island Cell Block five and six. These cards basically just try and stop XQT in their tracks, try and make it so they can't really play the game because that deck is a pain in the ass to deal with. 
our anti C serpent maximum cards is talismanic accelerator to try and weaken them. We have traditional tax because a lot of the time that deck likes to just pump draw just a crap ton of cards. So this ideally punishes them for that. And the torrential tribute because again they turn off traps during the battle phase and have destruction prevention if their graveyard is empty. So hopefully we can catch them while their graveyard is still not empty. And then we have our anti seven one diffusion cards, which is our word workings, which basically get rid of their fusion materials before they get the summon. So this is the deck. It's it's very strong. I feel like maybe this deck isn't quite tier one, but it's at like the top of tier two. It's very, very powerful. It can definitely win games. It can steal games quite a lot, and it's very fun to play. Let's fire in some replays, see what I'm talking about.